Hey everyone, thanks for coming back and checking out Tilt Tech Pinball here on YouTube. Uh, appreciate you stopping in again. Uh, we've been addressing a lot of problems with uh, all of my machines down here in the basement. Uh, we definitely have made some progress in the last video. Uh, we rebuilt the <clears throat> pop bumpers here on Evil Knievel and they now play like a dream, so that is awesome. Um, then uh, what happened? The That same night after uh, rebuilding those pop bumpers, I invited my buddy Nathan over. Uh, we played some... Uh, let me take you out of the tripod here. We played some Mars God of War <clears throat> and ended up catching the machine on fire. So, so what happened? Um, and I haven't investigated too thoroughly, but what I suspect happened... We were playing the hell out of it. Uh, both of us had some really long, drawn-out games, uh, really putting the machine through the paces. And the uh, pop bumpers, which we've been having problems with, this uh, upper right pop bumper here, uh, that one's already, the coil on that one's burnt out. The pop bumper driver boards need uh, repaired. Um, and so then... <laughs> This one locked on without us knowing it. Uh, we were playing the heck out of it and ended up the the underside of the glass ended up just filling with uh, smoke. <laughs> and uh, we were both down here, uh, surprised the hell out of us. We both kind of screamed at the same time, shut it off, shut it off. And um, by that time, there was a nice little cloud of smoke underneath the uh, the glass between the play field and the glass. Uh, so in the next video, not this video, but the next video, we will definitely be um, rebuilding those pop bumper driver boards and um, putting in new coils for the two of those and um, getting the uh, God of War back up and running. I'm actually scared to turn it on right now because I just feel like uh, the pop bumper may just lock on even with uh, being in a track mode or anything and uh, burning out another coil. So, as of right now, God of War is going to uh, stay turned off. So, um, so as for what we're going to do today, um, I really want to get to God of War, honestly. I, I wish I could do that in this video, but I just don't have the time uh, allotted for today's video um, to address those pop bumper driver boards, especially re re rebuilding four of them. And putting in new coils and stuff. It's going to be a little bit of a, a process. Um, so today what I really would like to do is uh, address the problems that we have with Dragon. Dragon, uh, if you remember from the last video when I kind of went through and uh, pointed out all the things that need fixing on all the machines. Dragon here has the problem of not saving the high score. And whenever it does pop up something, it pops up this kind of gibberish. So everything zeros and then it flashes to uh, that and it's just kind of a garbled mess of uh, digits and stuff. Um, so that is actually the high score. So my my suspicion there is that either the bookkeeping functions need to be uh, flushed out, uh, the battery that somebody has, has actually taken the battery off of the um, off of the uh, MPU and uh, there's a remote battery on there now but it's just like a single double A or it's a kind of one of those batteries that looks like a double A that is um, like a old um, not cell phone but what am I trying to say home phone wireless home phone um, and uh, that is actually just dangling there so I'm assuming that's probably ran out of juice um, or is no longer taking a charge because there's no blocking diode on there either to prevent it from charging. So I'm assuming it's a rechargeable battery of some sort. Um, so I think what we need to do is take that out and actually put in a three AA battery holder to hold uh, those and put in a blocking diode so we don't try and recharge our AA batteries. And see if that fixes it. As far as flushing the bookkeeping functions, let me grab my keys. Those we can't actually flush out because the service switch down here, let me grab you off the tripod here. The service switch down here 
does absolutely nothing. So I'm going to press this while I show you up here. And it should show us what test we're in um, down there by where it says ball in play and number to match and uh, the amount of credits. But absolutely nothing. Um, everything seems to be actually be soldered correctly to the service switch down here. Let's see if I can get you a good view of all of it. But the service switch, something, whenever I first got the game, it was a big sticky mess and I could barely even get the lock bar off because it was so, somebody um, spilled some Coke or beers down it. And the service switch is just a big sticky mess. So what I'd like to do today is address that. Uh, if you remember from the last video, I pointed out that the pendulum had been disabled. So here I got a new service switch. I got there. Um, I have the new little plumb bob, pendulum bob, that there. The clip that goes on the bottom of it is right there. And what else do I have? Oh, the ball that goes into the little roll trough for uh, whenever you pick up the machine. It uh, disable or it basically uh, shuts the machine off, uh, tilting it essentially, losing the entire game, not just the, the last ball in play. Uh, what else? I think that may be about, oh, well, the most important thing that I just mentioned. And there's the, uh, the battery holder for the three AA batteries. And uh, there's even a diode inside the baggie there. Uh, so we'll be installing that as well. So I think just real quickly, I'm just going to point a light into the coin box, set you guys up on a tripod and let's, uh, let's, uh, replace the pendulum little plumb bob in the bottom there. And, uh, then we'll go on to the service switch and then, uh, and then the batteries in the back box. So let me get you guys set up here. We'll be right back. Okay. So I got the game all opened up and, uh, play field is up and I got the ball removed the ball is sitting down here in the coin box and really what we're looking at first off is the plumb bob here uh, sometimes you'll just find the actual um, pendulum little arm there completely missing as well uh, and that's where the ball will go for the tilt mech uh, the, it's kind of, uh, I think it's called like the roll tilt. And actually, let's just put that in just real fast because that's just super easy. So let me see if I can get this out of here one handed without dropping it on the glass. So, and these are actually a different size than the regular balls that you'll get in the machine, um, the actual ball in play. Um, and that's not good because it's already rolling forward. So this actually needs to be like that. So I didn't realize that this entire board here is not even connected to the wall, but in one, one point, little pivot point. And I think that's like right, right there. This little screw is the only thing that's holding it on. So... Uh, that little hook here is actually for your coin box, or I'm sorry, your back box keys. But it should go something like that. But really we want that pendulum arm there to, but we don't want this to roll forward like that, because if it rolls forward too far, it activates this switch and kills the game. Well, that's kind of uh, where it needs to be, really. Maybe a little bit lower. There. But I do need to secure that to the uh, side somehow. I'm not sure why it's so loose on there. But uh, let's see what you guys can see if I put you on the tripod here. We'll get you in really close here. And I'm just going to put the uh, pendulum together. So 
the uh, coin box out of the way. Give you guys a little bit better view. Scooch in nice and close. Okay, so we got this, our little pendulum, plumb bob, and our clip. So this will just slide up from the bottom here. I'm not completely blocking your view. So we're just going to slide this up from the bottom. So it goes into the ring. And the flat part of this goes upward to rest against the flat of the, the bottom of the pendulum. So, and then there's three holes that everything kind of has to route through. There's the hole on the top, on the flat part, then it goes through the other two holes here on the bottom. And then uh, just the way the, the springiness of the metal keeps everything kind of cinched together around the pendulum arm. And makes it so the, kind of want to squish it all together at first to make sure everything slides all the holes line up and there we have it hopefully you guys could have seen any of that and then the way you adjust it is just to kind of squeeze it all together and move the and then push up from the bottom. And if you're not careful, you'll just push the, the rod up the top here. And that's fine, it still, it still comes to a stop there, but you can't really push the pendulum up very far if, well I guess it goes, it clears the entire hole. So I guess you could use this as a stopper point for the rod and then push the clip up the bottom. But I usually keep my uh, games at pretty low tilt settings, tilt sensitivity. So that's that. So now we got the pendulum in, the uh, little roll tilt uh, set up. Uh, the pendulum is actually dead center right now. Maybe a little bit off if I were to do that. And then the ball is still staying in place there. So yeah, I think that'll work. I do need to figure out a way to mount that on the side there. Let's just turn the game on real quick. Keeping the play field up, activate a game, and uh, see if both of these mechanisms now work, that they have the, the proper hardware installed. Okay. Hmm. It just keeps counting up. I'm getting a thousand points per beep. One of the switches must be really kind of close together and uh, acts differently whenever it's, the play field is up versus when the play field is down because now it's not making the, the beep. So I wonder what that was. You can kind of tap and press on things a little bit to see if you can get it to activate by just jostling the machine. So, um, so let's see if I can uh, kill this by so I'll, I'll let you guys see the back box here so there's my player one score and I'm going to push the tilt bob into the ring and see if it shuts off and yes everything just went dark on the play field but it is looking for it will not uh, turn the game back on until the ball makes it all the way into the trough so and we're reactivated. Now on ball two. Um, so let's see what happens when we uh, roll this guy up the lane. It should kill the entire game. And it does nothing. The 
Well, that's a problem. I wonder. If the switch contacts are just dirty or whatever, but really I'm not that concerned about it because it is something that nobody would ever do in my basement um, to my game. Nobody's going to lift the front of the machine to try and manipulate the machine to get the ball to not drain or something like that or to, I don't know. But nobody's going to do it down here. So um, I think we need to move on to this service switch. So I'm going to grab my soldering iron, grab the service switch. Get you guys set back up on the tripod. We'll remove that nasty, sticky service switch and uh, put in a new one here. So, be right back. Okay, everyone, we're back. Um, I have my soldering iron hooked up here in the uh, service port of Dragon and I uh, have it placed here in the bottom of the coin box. It's all heated up now. Basically what we're going to do is remove these this blue lead and then there's these two yellow leads that go to the same lug here on the bottom of the uh, service switch. And then there's these two screws at the top here. One actually holds down a grounding wire and they're just flathead screws but it takes off this entire little bracket that the service switch sets into. And then our new service switch will take out that entire bracket once all the wires are removed and uh, pop the new service switch in there and then put everything back together the exact same way we found it. So let's just get started. Got my soldering iron here. Just heat these up, pull these wires off. So there's the blue wire off. And then, what's the best way to do this? And the yellow wires are off now. And that's that. Uh, so, got my little screwdriver here. Flathead bit on it. Well, that one's pretty solidly on there. Wow. Wow. Um, I think I'm just going to try and take him off manually then, if that be the case. Because... be able to get some better uh, leverage on it if I actually manually try to take it off with a real screwdriver. But at the moment my flathead is MIA so I guess we're going to try this another time or two. Okay let's try it upside down like this. Oh yeah, there we go. And when uh, making any kind of adjustments to this st kind of stuff, make sure the game is actually turned off. You can even see it is so nasty. Somebody did not love this machine nearly enough. There's all like Coca-Cola, beer, residue on the switch all over the place. It's even still sticky. Um, so. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's take a look up here. Let me... Get you guys up here a bit further so we can actually take a look at this switch. So there's the old switch. Here's our new switch. <clears throat> right there. Um, on the old one it actually has this center leg. So we have three legs coming off of everything here. 
Uh, there's this far leg here that kind of sticks out the side there, then this one, and then the, the far left one here. So everything kind of lines up the same way. I'm assuming what we probably need to do is uh, cut this center leg off, just kind of like they have it here. As you can see, there's no center leg to that. Um, and these little clips on the side here hold the service switch into this bracket. So we just need to kind of squeeze these and work this up and out of the bracket. So let's remember the orientation here. So our switch needs to go back in this way. Do I want to clean that? I kind of want to clean this. Let me give this a quick clean. Kind of grab my simple green real quick and a paper towel and just get off while we have everything kind of disconnected here get off any kind of nasty sticky residue so I'm just going to spray some simple green on a cloth here and I'm just going to do this real quick because I will go back through and do a much more thorough cleaning of this game because it desperately needs it. Well, it's getting a little bit better. Really what this thing needs is a good cleaning and then a good polish with an actual orbital like bench grinder kind of polisher but for now I would like to be able to at least touch it and not cringe <clears throat> from sticky nastiness okay So that's much better now. So like I was saying, in the next video, we will definitely be re rebuilding pop bumper driver boards. Um, it's funny, I actually went on YouTube trying to find, you know, just to try and further educate myself on the uh, rebuilding of the pop bumper driver board process. And there's nobody that's ever done a video on this. So stay tuned for that. That'll be uh, in the next few days next week sometime maybe so there's our switch once again and the uh, the bracket is a little little better than what it was so let's turn our attention back over to here I'm just gonna put it back in with the same screws that uh, we're holding it there and uh, then I'll readjust the camera so you guys can see the uh, resoldering here in a second so Actually, would it be easier to solder these back on with it? No, because then I'd have way too many things to hold. It's going to be awkward no matter what, but I think having this secured to the back here will definitely help with one less thing to try and fumble with. We will find out here in a second how easy this will do while it's still in place here. Don't forget to put back on your uh, grounding wire here. I guess I'm just going to leave that center lug attached and not cut it off or break it off. And uh, I don't think it will get in the way of anything. There's nothing really for it to make contact with down there. So I don't think it's going to be in the way. I kind of like this little screwdriver just because it's compact. 
The only thing I don't like about it is that it literally has one speed. You can't slowly press the trigger on it and you'll go kind of slow. It's just this medium fast torque twist that uh, it has to it and there's just, yeah, it's not, not really my favorite, but it gets the job done. Oh, that actuates so much better than the, the old sticky na nasty nightmare. Okay. Well, I guess we're just going to jump right into the soldering of it all. Um, let me lower you guys down here a little bit so you guys have a little bit better of an angle. This isn't a uh, how to solder tutorial video, but if you really want to see it being done, I think we can make it happen here. What do you think? If only the coin door will stay. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a go here. <clears throat> So this blue wire, I'm just going to get some new solder on it. It's looking good. Get some solder on these lugs <clears throat> down here. That's really strange. The solder is not wanting to stick to these. These uh new lugs here. Hmm. Well, I think that's sticking. As for these two yellow wires, I think I'm going to try to strip them back a little bit and twist them together because I don't really want to deal with two individual wires here like this. So, <clears throat> let me grab my strippers and cutters here. I would highly recommend getting some uh, auto strippers. I have a pair, but they are really chintzy, like Harbor Freight kind of stuff, and they do not serve me well at all, so. Mm. Probably need a little bit more to work with here. There we go. That's one. Two. Let's see if we can twist these together and then apply some solder to it. <clears throat> um, if these lugs really don't want to take solder, I think the only way around that is to take the little bracket back off, take the switch back out, and, uh, sorry, excuse me for a moment, be right back. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, we're back. Um, uh, so I'm taking a look here to let's see if we can, uh, get these wires here. Tend 
and then try and navigate ourselves to the bottom of the switch and see if we can get so got solder on those okay I'm gonna try and move these bundle of wires ouch those are still hot out of the way here so we can get some solder <clears throat> on this bottom lug down here I'm gonna actually bend it down a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work with here Okay, well, let's see if these will attach now. Well, that was the one I was kind of worried about, <clears throat> but that would, uh, that one was actually pretty, pretty easy going. So we got that attached and move these wires back down to their proper kind of positioning. We'll attach this blue wire and then see. if our service switch now does anything. Okay. Well, let's lower the play field back down. <clears throat> Turn the machine on. Okay, so we still have the uh, the gibberish high score numbers. Let's see. Okay, new service switch. Let's see if it does anything. It does nothing. Do you have to hold it down? Was that all it was? Did all I had to do with the old service switch was just hold it down? Well, we're still getting some like weird gibberish up there. So I can tell which uh, test mode I'm in by the number advancing here on the bottom. I have to look in the manual to find out what's what. Well, I'm really not too disappointed that I replaced the service switch anyways because it was a big sticky nightmare down there. So, but I'm not gonna really be able to do. So this is the display test. So I know all the displays are good. Uh, all of the segments in the displays and all the digits are actually good. See if we can get like oh there's the solenoid test. And that's it. Whatever that was about. Okay. Well, I'm just going to turn the, uh, cycle the power on the game to get out of the test modes and
I think our big problem is that we have actually corrupted data <clears throat> in the in the uh, ROMs from the last point it saved uh, the high score, and because the battery is no good any longer, it uh, yeah we need to flush that stuff out using our service switch. But I'm also going to put in the new battery. And then after the new battery's in, we can flush all of the bookkeeping functions and stuff and see if we can get the uh, garbage to go away. Let me put you back up here on the tripod. I'm gonna open up the back box, make a little room so we can work in the back box and uh, replace the battery there. So one moment, we'll be right back. Okay, everyone, we're back. I'm taking a look inside the back box here now. So this is the battery I was referring to. At one point in time, <clears throat> there was like a data century or uh, whatever um, battery that was used at the time um, for bookkeeping functions and save functions and you know things like that. Um, things that weren't actually uh, determined by the dip switches. Like you can actually use the dip switches across the top here to um, determine whether or not you want three ball or five ball and stuff like that. And those kind of things are permanent, you know, depending on what position the dip switch is in. But your high scores, saves, um, how many coins have been put down, uh, uh, slot number one or number two on the coin box or on the coin door, uh, those kind of things. Those all uh, save to uh, memory on one of the RAM chips. I'm not sure which RAM chip it is. One of the um, IC circuit RAM chips here on the uh, the motherboard and this is an original motherboard um, on my solar ride if you guys saw any videos on my solar ride it had a uh, replacement uh, aftermarket motherboard uh, it was called a Nywomp um, this one actually just has uh, or this one happens to have the the original motherboard there doesn't seem to be any kind of battery acid damage here on the motherboard so they removed the battery uh, before it did any kind of harm to the machine. So this is their replacement. It's one of those uh, cordless phone batteries, um, you know, for your home cordless phone. We're gonna remove this and uh, solder on our own. Uh, unfortunately, I have everything kind of set up here to do this while in the back box and the motherboard's still attached to the back box, but it looks like our, our traces that we need to actually solder to are on the back side of the uh, the motherboard here. So I think what we're gonna do, I'm actually going to uh, pause the video here in a second um, and take, well, here, I'll just do this while, while, we're, while we're filming. We'll take this out. Wow, that one's on there really good. That's a good thing means it's got a lot of friction force to make good contact with the edge connectors, the card edge connectors. So there's our motherboard detached from all of the and the uh, standoffs that hold it to the back box here. And there's a couple here in the center as well. So don't forget about those. Thinking that you got them all done and trying to wiggle your board off because wiggling these boards with any kind of real force um, can uh, cause some problems with the uh, soldering traces and stuff so stuff that's kind of already weakening you can uh, further weaken uh, the uh, solder joints and stuff getting you like the cold solder joint kind of look um, but yeah everything looks really good so there's the back side the battery is soldered to here and to here this being the positive there and this being the negative here uh, it's actually labeled on the front side um, you can see right here positive negative so we will uh, be attaching our new wires to that same location um, let me just hold this for a second there's our new battery holder really short leads on it but we have a little spool of uh, wire that came with it as well and then we'll have this uh, blocking diode in there also and the uh, blocking diode is so the because it, it typically would think that there's a rechargeable battery the uh, the original battery that was on the board was a rechargeable battery pack 
and uh, this battery was also rechargeable as well, so there was no need for a blocking diode. But the the whenever power is applied to the to the board, it actually tries to recharge this battery to keep it up to uh, capacity, so it can hold a charge, you know, for as as long as it can. So it keeps trying to recharge it whenever it has a chance to do so. And uh, the blocking diode will will put here in this uh, positive uh, pathway going to the batteries. Um, battery in this case, but batteries, and uh, we will uh, put the blocking diode there so it doesn't try to charge our non-rechargeable, just standard AA batteries. Um, so let me uh, get this on the uh, the bench and get you guys set up in a different location here, and we will be right back. Okay, everyone, we're back. Um, I think what I'm going to do is actually set the motherboard aside here real quick. Um, we've already kind of gone over, you know, the, the overview of the process. <clears throat> set that aside. And I'm going to build the battery pack up here. So this is our uh, length of wires that came with this little battery pack. And <laughs> I bought this so long ago off of, like, eBay for, like, I don't know, some something stupid. Uh, I'm sure I could have ordered, you know... And well, now I have just tons of excess wires. I have tons of these diodes. I have tons of shrink tubing. Um, and then the little battery pack itself is, you know, like a 60, 80 cent part if I were to order it by itself. But I think I actually bought this as like a kit, not knowing what to do at the time, um, for like eight or twelve dollars or something, something stupid. And there's really like a dollar fifty, two dollars worth of little parts here. Um, so don't do that. Get yourself some wire, um, get yourself an actual, you know, number of different, different spools of wire. I was going to show you my, you know, little spools of wire, but they're tucked back here somewhere. But I have some greens and some blacks and some reds and stuff, and you just cut them to length. Um, so it's best just to get yourself a couple of little spools of wire and stuff and kind of, so you have things for other projects down the road. So I'm going to use the entire length here of wire. Essentially, we're going to be connecting it to this, you know, end to end like this. We'll use some shrink tubing. Um, and this diode here, if you can see in the in the picture, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, the diode actually does have a side, this left side of the diode. It, it does have like a little silver or white band on it. And that diode uh, banding uh, kind of shows its polarity and it will not allow the band essentially um, blocks electrical flow back the, that direction. So this will actually, the band itself will actually be pointed towards the, the motherboard. Um, so it will not allow the motherboard tries to charge the battery the, the electrical current coming from the motherboard back towards the battery pack will will end right here. It will not let electrical current pass this other direction. It will be blocked at this point. Um, so, let's get started. So, take off the little ends of the... And that's a 4004, 4004 diode. So we're just going to trim off some of the ends on both sides of this, both sides of our battery pack, the leads going off of it. And the reason I'm going to use this entire length, because I don't really know where I'm going to place it yet, probably just to the sidewall of the back box, and um, but it'll give me all of my options available. With that amount of length of cable, I should be able to put it wherever I want. So, with uh, 12 or 18 inches worth of wire to work with, I'm sure I can find some, you know, good out of the way place where it's not going to leak on anything in case something tragic does happen to happen. Happen to happen. So. Let's tin these wires. Oops, I just dropped stuff. Let's tin these wires here just real quick. Maybe I'll use this to help things out a little bit. Put them both in there. Get some solder on both of these. 
The black is just going to go straight from this black wire to the other side of the black wire, just extending the length of the wire. Um, there we go. These are braided wires, but they don't really uh, want to suck up the solder. They are so small. And my hand is definitely a bit jittery. Wow, this wire does not want to uh, take any solder. But I think there's a little bit on there. Yeah, there's a bit, not a lot, but it should work. Especially when we get these ones. This The, the wires coming off of these just lengths of wire are uh, a bit thicker of a gauge. So... The ones coming off the little battery pack are really thin, so there's not a lot of wires for the solder to kind of soak into. But I think I was saying, um, so the black is just going to go straight to the black, and the the other side is going to have that diode on there. Um, with that being said, maybe we can just attach the black to black <clears throat> right now, like so. And get that all well oops I want to have a piece of shrink tubing here on the line remember to put that on first I guess we could have put it on the other end and kind of gone back this way but sometimes both ends are actually secured to something <clears throat> and if you don't put it on the, the one opportunity that you have to put it on can't put it on after the fact. And there we go. So the black one's done. Nice and snug. We can actually move the See, these are the wire strippers that you should not get. They are garbage. I should probably throw them away because they suck. So if you ever see wire strippers like that, they're like five bucks, six bucks at Harbor Freight. Seems like a good deal. Do not buy them because whenever you try to use them on a wire, um, maybe it won't be so bad on a solid core wire, but on a braided uh, wire, it'll actually rip out a good portion of your uh, wire braids. So what I'm doing now is just heating the shrink tubing up. Just a little dab of heat. And you can see it kind of sucks. You can see whenever uh, it starts to shrink, it'll actually suck the uh, kind of making a form of the uh, wires underneath. So yeah, so that one's all done. So on this side, we have to put the diode in and we need to make sure that the banded side is opposite of the battery pack. And we need to make sure to put our shrink tubing on there. I think what I'm going to do is actually cut off the legs to make them smaller because I don't want to put a piece of shrink tubing this lo you know this long, you know, from the the exposed end of the wire, and then the entire length of this wire. So I think I'm going to cut this back a little bit so we don't have to use nearly as much shrink tubing to cover up our sloppy work here. Actually, this isn't sloppy work. I shouldn't say that. Um, so this end of the wire already has solder on it. The This is the battery pack side. This wire is coming straight off the battery pack. So we want the non-banded end to go on to here. Um, let me grab my needle nose. So I can hold this because it's going to get raging hot really fast. Um, actually, I'm going to put some solder on him. There we go. Let's 
priority already raging hot, so I'm actually going to. Eh, not so bad. Nope, it is hot. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Why am I doing this? Okay. So non banded side is going towards the battery pack side here. So let's see with what little solder I have on both of these sides if I can get these two to adhere to one another. And you know what I just did? I just put on, well let's see if this is uh, large enough to go over the diode. Oh my god, it might actually be. Well, we just saved our butts because I just did exactly what I said not to do, and that is not forget to put the shrink tubing on your on your uh, work. Before you connect your make your connections. Let's see if I can get this to go down. And I can't. Let me grab another pair of needle nose. I can grab this side with the needle nose, and I can grab the actual tubing, maybe on this side and pull it back. There we go. Okay, so we're going to butt this. Actually, I'm just gonna take it right up to the diode itself. So I'm gonna actually cinch the diode in there, just like that. Hope you guys can see all this. I apologize if you can't. No, I think you guys got a pretty good view. So shrink it up nicely here. And then we're on to the other side. So this is the side that's going to be going towards our motherboard. Um, I've already tinned this side. Let's put our shrink tubing on here. Don't forget that again. Um, I haven't put any solder yet on this side of the diode, so let me let me do that. go and our diode is pointing the correct direction and Let's see if we can get everything to adhere now There it is, an inline diode. And uh, slide this back up without burning myself. Again, I'm just gonna put it right up onto the very edge of the diode. Actually, I may as well just put it all the way across the diode because there's very little. So now it's just butting up against the other side of the shrink tubing. But there's a diode in there somewhere. And it's all shrunk down see if you guys can see the end results here that's there's a diode inside of there and the banded end is over on this side which goes to the end here which will go to our motherboard and because I'm kind of neurotic it will bug me now that we got that diode in there that the wires are now different lengths <laughs> So I'm going to pull this down to here and cut this off. Okay, so there's that. So let me get our motherboard back in place here and we will uh, 
solder the uh, the sides to the motherboard. So be right back. One moment. Okay, okay, everyone, we're back. And let me reposition you a little bit here. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna just cut off. Well, maybe I'm not gonna cut off because that would be silly. I'm going to desolder the uh, the wires from the back side of the board here for the old battery that we're replacing. So one wire is off. And the next wire is off. Um, I'm going to use uh, the solder sucker for this real quick to uh, expose these holes. So let me find my solder sucker real fast. Here it is. Okay, so heat this up, heat this trace up. There we go. And this one here. Okay, so we're just going to pass these wires through. Um, this is our positive here. Got the board upside down from any time we've ever had it. So, um, gosh, these are really small holes. These wires, I don't think, are going to fit through these holes, especially if they're all tinned with solder. So let me twist this up really good and see if this will pass through. Well, the wires themselves will pass through, so maybe I'll just do that. Um, double check. So this is not the positive, that's the negative, so I'm glad I double checked. So we're going to pass this wire through the positive hole here. Making sure all of the little wire strands make its way through. We're going to bend it down. Okay, well I think that should hold itself in place. not wanting to fall out or anything so we're just going to tack this to the back side here on this trace I bent it up this way so whenever um, so if it does make contact with anything else it's making contact in the direction that the the electricity is flowing anyway so I just bent it upwards so I don't have to worry so much about cutting off the excess the excess is headed in the correct direction anyway so it's just along that trace and flip it back over our black lead here let's twist it up really good so it's all snug down Pass this through. There we go. And it looks like it goes off to the left here. So I'm just going to bend that down to the left. And hopefully that keeps everything in place there. Some nice new solder and I think that's it both of those look really really good now um, so that's it so we have our two leads coming off let's kind of review our work um, we got our positive here uh, you can see the positive symbol maybe under there 
Um, our negative symbol is actually under that wire. You can just barely see it under there. And that all leads to our battery pack. And here, as this red wire goes into this battery pack, um, it goes to the positive side of a battery. Let's see if I can get that. You can see the positive symbol there for the battery. So that's it. There's our old battery that we chopped off. Um, so let me reposition you. We'll be taking a look at the back box and uh, figure out where we're going to mount this. I'll get some batteries in it and see if that makes any kind of changes to our uh, problems that we have with uh, Dragon. So one moment. Okay, everyone, we're back. Um, I now have some batteries in our battery holder. I have our board here. We're just going to uh, remount it back up in here into the back box. Um, so we have the four corner standoffs. We gotta make sure these ones here in the center go through. Make sure you kind of get a little bit of a click out of them, knowing that the, making sure that they actually went all the way down onto the standoff. Here's our battery holder. I'm actually just going to drape it over here. There's nothing on the back side of it that can really cause any kind of contact with uh, any other kind of electrical components. So I think that's a pretty good spot just to lay it for the moment. While we test, put everything back on the wire where it's supposed to be. That goes there. This guy goes here. This one goes here. And then these two go down the side. And I think we're ready to turn it back on. Let's just double check. Can't think of anything else that really... Our battery's there. Blocking diode in line with the positive on this side. Well, let's close the, the back box and uh, see what what happens. So let's close this up and see if we've made any kind of progress. That's not good. some adjustment on this locking mechanism on my back box door. Okay, let's see if we've made any kind of improvements here. So I'm going to turn the machine on. That's good. Okay. I'm assuming... Oh! Hold on. So that high score to date, it just has zeros. So uh, we've made improvements. And uh, there's no credits. Okay, now we have. I was trying to kick out the ball. Let's see if we can set a new high score. Everything seems to be functioning correctly. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is just do this. Hit one of these various targets all the way back. Lights the green spinner. I'm just going to rack up one of these, at least to the replay value, which is 440. Holy crap.
now we have five times multiplier for our bonus. Good God. Well, whatever. Let's just see what happens with that. So let's drain the ball. Get lots of multiplier here. Okay, well, let's try that all again real quick. Let's let's see what happens. Vera target all the way back. target for some reason. There it goes. So we're still on one times multiplier, now two times, now three times, now four times, now five times. Give this another couple of spins. Maybe some of this. Some of that. So we're at our highest multiplier bonus and uh, well, multiplier and multiplier bonus. So with the multiplier, if we drain now, that should go past the replay value of 440,000. The knocker didn't fire, but uh, whatever, that's a huge score, especially for this game this drain real quick and then we'll see whether or not it actually holds on to the high score after it. And one more. Drain that. Some five ball. Okay, now it's on five, fifth ball, and okay, four hundred eighty-nine thousand is our new high score, and damn it, why does it do that? So now, if you look up here, it shows it. And then whenever high score to date lights up, they're just like by the woman's head up here in this little purple space. High score to date, it just gives all zeros. So let's see what happens if we power cycle it now. Game over, all zeros. High score to date. All blank. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do some quick research. Um, well, let's see what happens whenever our bookkeeping functions. Well, at least we get... I don't know if that's any better. We just get a whole bunch of sixes. Six, six, six. Six, six, six. There's our score display. That's supposed to be a high score to do, I think. Oh, well there's our Illinois test. It won't let me go past 13 for our uh, for our test menus. Hmm. Well, let me do some research and I'll be right back. 
Okay, everyone, I just found out some new information here. Um, looking up online at uh, pinwiki.com under Gottlieb System 1s. So after you, uh, like I was mentioning in the very first portion of this video about clearing out the auditing functions. Um, and uh, it's definitely necessary to do that after replacing uh, a battery. So if the battery was dead or causing corrosion on the motherboard or anything like that, it says that you have to replace the battery and then after the battery has been replaced to then clear the audit functions um, for audit uh, numbers one through 10. So we're, kinda ha we're gonna kinda have to go in and out of the back box here, being able to view the displays as well as uh, um, get inside the back box here. So the way that I've just read to do this is, so you push the, um, the uh, service switch inside the coin box here, inside the coin door, the white service switch, and it'll go to zero here on the um, ball in play. Is that what it is? Ball in play area here. <laughs> and then um, once you get this to go to zero or one, zero through ten needs to, all the auditing functions need to be cleared out so we don't have this kind of wacky data going on. Um, so we set, by pushing the audit button inside, or I'm sorry, not the audit button, but the uh, test button inside the coin door there, get that set to zero, and then there's a reset button here on the, on the, uh, the uh, motherboard here in the back box. So let's just do this real quick. So I press the, okay, so we got a zero, and I'm going to push reset here. Let's see what happens. Gone. Okay. Push it one more time. Now we're on one. I'm just going to hold this reset button down again. And I think that's gone now too. Push it one more time. We're now on two. I get the 666 thing again. Kind of creepy. Gone. Push it one more time. We're on three now. No data there, but I'm going to press it again. Zeros. Push it one more time. We're on four now. And zeros. Five, six, 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 six. Gone. Now we're on six here. And no data showing, but I'm holding down. So I'm actually, I don't think it's just a press on that reset button. It's actually like you have to hold it. Um, seven here, no data. But it's a very short press. It's like two seconds. Uh, eight we're now on. Zeros. Nine. Zeros. And ten. This should be our last one. Zeros. Now I wonder if we were to cycle back through these. Well, no, it says just to turn everything off. So I'm just gonna power cycle it. And now, let's see what happens whenever I turn the machine back on. I'm gonna give it a second or two. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually saving anything. I hope that it is. Uh, I would assume that it is saving all of the changes that we just made by zero and everything out. So the changes are essentially zero but it needs to save those then to the, to the RAM. So I think it's been long enough. Let's turn it back on. So anytime this light up here comes on up here, this is our high score to date light. So it does still say zeros, or it doesn't even say zero, it just has a, a big blank. Um, and uh, I still have 73 as our amount of credits in there as well. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to do another kind of high score here. Uh, very target. Spend the heck out of some stuff here on the play field. I'm going to adjust you guys down here. I don't think we can really. Maybe if I back you up, we can kind of see both. Maybe. I don't know. 
if that's any better or not. But let's go through this. We're going to rack up some points here, hit some switches, spin some targets. Huh, I wonder. Is that never given points? I need to take a look at that switch below. This pop bumper is not actually uh, giving points out. off on this if it is something that hey the knocker went off that's never happened I've never heard the knocker in this machine so actually it looks like the replay threshold is somewhere around 250,000 so let's just end it at that so ball drain collect our bonus I'm just going to drain the next couple of balls So, the, uh, like I was saying earlier, the dip switches um, hold some memory, not hold memory, but determine some parameters in the machine, but the actual replay threshold is actually determined by uh, going in to the service switch here and setting the, uh, the parameter, you know, how high you want the service, or I'm sorry, the uh, replay threshold to actually be set at. So, uh, let's uh, plunge the next ball. Ball goes into play, ball drains. Um, we accidentally got an extra ball, so it's got ball drains. So now on ball three, um, plunge the ball. If you don't actually make contact with a switch of any sort, um, the uh, it will not it'll it will not register that ball as actually having been a good ball, and it'll let you replay the ball kind of a sneaky move on some machines because you can with a bad plunge you can actually uh, get your ball back and that's ball five so 399 500,000 orange light come on yeah it saved although it's got some weird ass um, well we kind of got there so this is when this lights up that's indicating that it's displaying the high score to date and when it does the zero is gone from all the displays. Weird. Well, that sucks. I'm not sure what that's all about. Well, we kind of fixed it. Kind of. I'm not sure whether or not to call that a win or not. What is that? What do we do about that? What does the pin wiki say uh, to do about that, I wonder? Okay, let's close this up. But we, we now, it actually does show uh, real numbers rather than just gibberish, but uh, the last number is actually uh, not there. So that's kind of odd. So I wonder what we need to do about that. Um, maybe that's something I'll just correct on my own. I'll do some research, try and find out what it is that uh, needs to happen to get that fixed. Um, but I'm going to call that a win. Today, what did we do? We put in a pendulum, uh, we put in a service switch, and we put in a remote battery holder. We reset the uh, uh, audit data on the ROM chip, and uh, it's kind of a win. We did a lot of stuff. Everything worked out. Uh, we got everything fixed, except now when the uh, high score date displays, it doesn't quite display like it's supposed to. So... It's really close. We almost did it. But I'm going to call that a win. Because uh, uh, it's so close to a win. We just got to have to chalk that up in the win category. So, thank you all for uh, coming back and checking out uh, Tilt Tech Pinball here on YouTube. Um, we'll have another video coming out here real soon. Uh, doing those pop bumper driver boards in Mars God of War. So, take a look back for that here in the following days. And thanks a lot again for uh, stopping back in. Bye-bye.